Georgia, Russia, and Ukraine predominantly is where the Khazar Empire was. Many of, and Herzl and many of the early Zionists came from that region. They're Austrian, Russian, coming from that region where we know that there was later on, many years after any of these biblical stories, there was a lot of conversion to Judaism. There was a lot of conversion to Judaism. There was a lot of conversion to Judaism. <laughs> Jewish people first entered uh, the land of Israel 3,300 years ago. Okay, so they came from somewhere else, right? So he's going to tell us this is why the Jewish people belong here. This is why these other people don't belong here. And he's saying, first of all, the people were here. They came to, to the land 3,300 years ago. And if you don't believe the Bible, then you can believe archaeology. They came to the land 3,000 years ago. So there were people already there. Uh, this wasn't, in the Bible, it even says this wasn't like desolate, des just empty land. There were people that were there, the Canaanites, and that Abraham showed up with his family. So where does scholars say Abraham came from? Well, scholars say that, uh, says the Bible states that Abraham was raised in Ur of the Chaldeans. Most scholars agree that Ur, uh, that area was the Sumerian city of, you know, this, well, anyway, they say it's about two, the city, the, the city where Abraham comes from is about 200 miles southeast of Baghdad. I can't pronounce all the names, but 200 miles southeast of Baghdad in lower Mesopotamia in what is now modern day Iraq. So he comes from Iraq. That's where Abraham comes from. That's where the Jewish people come from. What to deal with the Chaldeans? What to deal with the Chaldeans? You know, because this is the territory that Abraham was raised in. This is the territory that Abraham dwelt, Sarah dwelt, his father dwelt, his family dwelt. So let's get an idea of exactly who the Chaldees were. All right, let's go here. Right? It says here, in consequence of the prejudice, uh, for it is really prejudice against the Negro, or I ought rather to say, against the possibility of a Negro being learned and scientific arising from an acquaintance with the present Negro character. I admit with great difficulty, the theory of all the earlier astronomical knowledge of the Chaldees having been acquired or invented by his race and that the Chaldees were originally Strong's G 3526 Niger Niger The 200 miles southeast of Baghdad in lower Mesopotamia in what is now modern day Iraq. So he comes from Iraq. That's where Abraham comes from. That's where the Jewish people come from. Because it was Abraham's children. He had 13 children, 12 of them boys, one of them a girl. So there was the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone can read that in the Bible. Assuming you don't believe the Bible, then you can look at archaeology, which shows evidence of about 3,000 years ago. There's no dispute that uh, the Jewish people founded their first commonwealth, the kingdom of David, 3,000 years ago. It was destroyed. We were kicked out. We came back, founded the second commonwealth of Israel, which went on for several hundred years. And again, it was destroyed this time by the Romans. Jews stayed in Israel, but few Jews stayed in Israel. The rest of the Jews were kicked out to all across the world. And every day they prayed three times a day that they want to return to Israel. In the time of Bible history, there was a geographic area known as Judea. Judea was a province of the Roman Empire. Now, a person who lived in Judea was known as a Judean, and in Latin it was Judeus, 
and in Greek it was Judaios. Those are the two words, Greek and Latin, for a Judean. Now, the word in Latin and Greek, there is no such letter as J. And the first syllable of Judaeus and Judaeus starts Jew. Now, when the Bible was written, it was first written in Greek, Latin, Anantic, Syriac, Aramaic, all those languages. Never was the word Jew in any of them because the word didn't exist. Judea was the country and the people were Judeans and Jesus was referred to only as a Judean. I have seen those early, the earliest uh, scripts available. I'm always at the American Bible Society, and there was no such thing. In 1345, a man by the name of Whitecliffe in England thought it was time to translate the Bible into English. There was no English edition of the Bible because who the devil could read? It was only the educated church people who could read Latin and Greek, Syriac, Aramaic, and the other languages. Anyhow, Wycliffe thought, I'm going to make this translation into English. And he did. But in it, he had to look around for some words for Judaeus and Judaeus. There was no English word because Judea had passed out of existence. There was no Judea. People had long ago forgotten that. So he in the first translation, use the word in referring to Jesus as G-Y-U, Jew. The first translation of the Bible, of the scriptures into English, Jesus was referred to as G-Y-U, Jew. There was no printing press. Now, between 1345 and the 17th century, when the printing press came into use, that word passed through so many changes. I have them all here. If you want, I can read them to you. I will. It was first G-Y-U, Jew. Then G-I-U, Jew. Then I-U, Jew. Because the I in Latin is pronounced like the J, like Julius Caesar is I-U-L. There is no J in Latin. Then I-U-W. U, then I E U U, then I E U I, Huey, then I W E, then I O W, then I E W E, all in Bible, as time went on, then I E U E, then I U E, then I V E, then I E W, and finally in the 18th century, J E W, Jew. All the corrupt and contracted form for Judaeus and Judaeus in Latin. Now, there was no such thing as Jew. And any theologian, I've lectured in maybe 20 of the most prominent theological seminaries in this country, and two in Europe, there was no such word as Jew. There only was Judea. So let's pause right there for just a second. So he says the Jews stayed in Israel, but if, but uh, so a few Jews stayed in Israel. The rest of the Jews were kicked out all across the world. Uh, okay, where did the Jews go? So the 10 lost tribes. So there were the two or well, the 12 tribes of Israel were actually 13 tribes because one of the tribes was actually split into two, Ephraim and Manasseh. So there's 13 tribes effectively. Most of them were lost. There were a couple of them that remained. We know the history of those people and where they, and they were the Jewish people that stuck around, that were there. We know that those people were there. The 10 lost tribes, however, let me just read this to you. The king of Assyria captured Samaria and he carried them away to Assyria and placed them in Hala and on the harbor, the river of Gozan and the cities of Medes. So in the years 722 to 721 BC, the 10 tribes who comprised the Northern kingdom of Israel disappeared conquered by the Assyrian king. 
They were exiled to Upper Mesopotamia, today modern Syria and Iraq. So they're Arabs. So these are these are the, the ten lost tribes. They weren't lost like they disappeared into nothingness. They were lost in that they lost their identity. They lost their Jewishness. They lost their uh, the religion that they believed. They lost their ancestral identity. They don't know who they are anymore, meaning they are not Jewish people who identify as Jewish. And we know from these stories that they were carried off to Syria and Iraq, meaning that the Arabs who then would come back into the into the area would be potentially these very people. What does that mean? What is the Arab invasion and how has it impacted the image of the modern Egyptians of today? The modern Egyptians are not the original people occupying Egypt. They are the results of the Arab invasion. This invasion occurred during the reign of Umar, the second caliph of the Arabs. Arab armies under the leadership of Amr ibn al-Anas invaded and conquered Egypt in 639 AD. According to outlines of ancient Egyptian history, 1892 by Francois Auguste Fernandez Mariette, page 28 says, how often do we see and Eastern minarchies, and even in Europe states, a difference of origins between the ruling class to which the royal family belongs and the mass of the people. We need not leave Western Asia and Egypt. We find there's Turks ruling over nations to the race of which they do not belong. Although they have adopted their religion in the same way as the Turks of Baghdad, who are Finns, now reign over Semites. Turanian kings may have led into Egypt and governed a population of mixed origins where Semitic elements was prevalent. If we consider the mixing up of races, which took place in Mesopotamia in remote ages, the invasions which the country had to suffer, the repeated conflicts of which it was the theater, there is nothing extraordinary that populations coming out of this land should have presented a variety of races and origins. The Journal of Cambrian Archaeological Association, Volume 4, 1873, page 72 says, Mr. Baldwin draws a marked distinction between the modern Mohammedans, Semitic population of Arabia and their great Cushite, Hamite or Ethiopian predecessor. The former, he says, are comparatively modern in Arabia. They have appropriated the reputation of the old race and have unduly occupied the chief attention of modern scholars. I hope this serves as a reminder to our community, the Negroes and other communities of dark, melanated people. We have to tell our own story. Where are those people? They weren't all around the world. They were carried. You couldn't travel all around the world very easily in those in that era. You made it just a little ways away. And many of them made it into what would later become Arab land. It's a pretty lousy 2000 years, you know, uh, pogroms, Holocaust. And but about 150 years ago, uh, secular Jews, uh, primarily uh, Herzl, Jabotinsky and others, took the initiative, let's come back to our own homeland. The Jews are the indigenous people of the land of Israel. No, they're not. He admitted that right up front. Up front, he said, the Jewish people first came to the area of Israel 3,300 years ago. That means they're not from there. We know where they're from. According to historians, Abraham, if you believe all of this, is from Iraq. So they're Iraqis, and yet they're taking this other piece of land rather than Iraq, but maybe Iraq's next, I don't know. Uh, and then he's saying that these are the indigenous people. We know that they're not. He's saying that Herzl, who was an Austrian, uh, took the initiative to go back to the homeland. But what we know is that there were periods of time of, there. it's not common now to convert to Judaism, but there were periods of time where there were massive conversions to Judaism. 
Um, for example, the Romans, during the Roman times, there was quite a bit of conversion to Judaism. Take into consideration, 10% of their population was Jewish. Many of them would con had converted to Judaism. Compare that to the United States, where the population of the Jew the Jewish population here is like 4% or something really small. So in the Roman times, it was, and this is actually the second largest hub of Jews outside of Israel is here in the United States. So there was a lot of Romans who converted, including uh, Roman elites like Queen Helena and Nero converted to Judaism, Nero. Um, there was also mass conversion within the Roman Empire itself. We also know that there was a lot of other conversions that happened with the Khazars, for example, the Khazarian Empire, which takes up modern day Ukraine, parts of Russia, Czechos uh, sorry, not Czechoslovakia. Let me pull up the map here. The various different, so pretty much, well, uh, Georgia, Russia, and Ukraine predominantly is where the Khazar Empire was. Many of, and Herzl and many of the early Zionists came from that region. They're Austrian, Russian, coming from that region where we know that there was later on, many years after any of these biblical stories, there was a lot of conversion to Judaism. Many people assert that Herzl and many of the Ashkenazi Jews that come from these Eastern European areas are actually descendants of converts. You say, well, where then did where the name Ashkenazi came from? Come from? So a little over a thousand years ago, as Jewish people scattered around the world had now emigrated in Europe and now were living in, in the Rhineland in Germany, they looked at the name Gomer in Genesis 10 and they connected Gomer with Germany, so they took on the identity of the name Ashkenaz. It has nothing to do with Ashkenaz in the Bible, which is a descendant of Yafet. It's just a name that was taken, okay? It's that simple. Just like my last name, Brown, doesn't refer to the color of my skin or anything else. It was shortened from a, from a Russian name when, when my grandfather came over uh, at Ellis Island, the name got shortened to Brown. It's just a name, that's all it is. So the idea that Ashkenazi Jews are descended from Yafet is a myth, 100% false, zero truth to it. Just study the history. You know what you are? You are an ancient Israelite. Ancient Israelite, that's who you are. That's who you are. You give me time. Yeah. You give me time. But, 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 I know, I know. Uh, we don't have. Yeah, I don't many years. I know, I know. Look, look at this. This is pages and pages of yeah. notes, and I promise we'll give more yeah. teaching. But here is my challenge to you. All right. I'm hearing some of your traditions. It's like the days of the Bible. Yes. Do you want to remain ancient Israelites, or you want to be Jews? As far as the alleged conversion of the Khazaris, you can read it in Yehuda Halevi's book, The Khazari, that there, it may be true that as there is debate and discussion, there are Turkic people a little over a thousand years ago that, that some of the leaders or some of the people did, in fact, convert to Judaism and then became part of the larger Jewish people. Khazaris as a whole disappeared from history. That's it. End of subject. There is no Khazarian mafia. There, there's not a single Jew on the planet that can be traced back in any definitive way to the Khazars. Zero. There, there's not a single Jew on the planet that can be traced back in any definitive way to the Khazars. Zero. There, there's not a single Jew on the planet that can be traced back in any definitive way to the Khazars. Zero. Are you familiar with the Khazar theory? There's a theory, it's widely accepted as anti-Semitic, that, that, that Ashkenazi Jews come from the Khazars and they don't, they're not Levantine. But it's, DNA it's tests... Not, it's not anti-Semitic, it's a question of fact. So uh, Shlomo San, for example, has argued that, I think probably exaggerated, but it's simply a question of fact. If my ancestors from the Ukraine have Khazar, uh, root changes nothing. I'm Jewish. My grandfather was Jewish. Uh, uh, he, uh, my family, happens to have a uh, story saying that we're descended from the Baal Shem Tov. Okay, that's part of the Same. culture. Doesn't matter what the DNA shows. Herzl and many of the Ashkenazi Jews that come from these Eastern European areas are actually 
descendants of converts. Yes, they've been Jewish for many, many, many years. I don't dispute their Jewishness because I believe being Jewish is a religion. You can believe whatever it is you believe. But their, their Jewishness does not stem from an ethnic tie to that region. It stems from a religious tie to a religion, to a family, you know, family ancestors who converted at some point. What's your thoughts? Please be respectful with your comments. Also, please click the like, click the notification bell, and subscribe to this channel. Listen, Genesis chapter 11, verse 10. Explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this back, Genesis 14, verse 13. Abraham steps on the scene. Being a descendant of Shem, which is a fact, means Abraham too was black. Abraham, born in the city of a black man, called Nimrod, grandson of Ham. Ham had four sons. One was named Cain. Here, let me do some explaining. Abraham, Isaac was the Jacob had 12 sons, for real. And these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10, these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10, these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10.